Caddis Maximus here, this time with a quick video about wood augers or ship augers. Sometimes called power augers because these are the type of wood drill bits that were very common. This style uh, for quite a long time, since the 1800s. And they were driven by what are known as brace drills, which are kind of like speed wrenches. Except for they have like a shoulder pad. They show up all the time. Tons and tons of braces. And I'm not into the manual brace drills. This is one of the tools I haven't been, just have never been into, but I've seen a million of those. So these are all power augers. They're called ship augers because oftentimes uh, in woodworking, I should say marine woodworking, uh, you're dealing, drilling lots of deep holes that need to be straight. And so that's where they kind of got their name ship augers as far as what I've read. You can get these in very long lengths. They're used by arborists who are restoring or trying to hold up old trees to tie the branches together. They have augers sometimes that are several feet long and they're custom order. They come in a variety of sizes from, of course, very small ones like this little 3 8 Greenlee uh, through large ones like this is a 1 in 5 8 auger. These types of bits, the large ones, can get pretty expensive, but this, the big beauty about these is uh, they last a long time and they drill a nice straight hole. And because this works as a Archimedes screw where it draws chips out, you don't have to withdraw the bit. You still have to withdraw it every once in a while, but you don't have to do it quite as often because it's able to carry the chips much further up. Learning about augers, most are of this design where they just do a big grind out of a uh, steel stock to make the spiral or the flutes. The big deal, I guess, where Irwin got their name from, even though they made their augers, don't even, their large augers, like these Irwins here, and we'll talk about them in a second, aren't made like their older or even a lot of their smaller ones. There, this is a much older Irwin, and actually it turns out in the late 1800s, Irwin did not invent this style, which has the center core, which is a bit stronger and a better design of auger. He bought the patent and then started mass producing them. So really where Irwin got their name from was actually making these specific types of auger bits, if we can get the camera to cooperate here, where they have, it's been underground just a little bit, so you have just a little bit more strength in there, and then it... By the nature of that grind, you get a little bit more hollow or concave right here in the inside edges of the flutes. So they cut better. And you can always tell a nice bit because you just grab one and you can really feel how uh, the flutes have a pretty sharp edge. Or on more standard units, such as like these newer Irwins here, uh, you can grab and really feel that it feels like the curve just comes out to being flat instead of actually hooking over and providing a, a better cutting surface. Cutting edge, I should say. So getting into the Irwins, they've had uh, been bought and sold, and their bits seem to be keep on getting cheaper and cheaper. Uh, what's interesting is these th are all three Irwin Brazilian 18-inch auger bits, and the standard lengths would be, say, 18-inch, 6-inch, and then they do have some micro augers such as these. I do have the uh, infamous Irwin Speed War, which is more of an auger than it is any kind of a spade bit because it has... Uh, multiple flutes. The speed boards just have three simultaneous cutting edges. I've also realized what the little tips are for is that they cut a little bit, they pre-cut a little bit deeper than the primary bottom cutting surface. That way when the bottom cutting surface comes around, it's able to make a cleaner cut and less tearing on the side. That's what those little tips are for. And even augers have the same type of deal where they have this sharp cutting edge that pre-cuts the edge a little deeper before the main uh, sweep comes along. Anyway, as far as these Irwins, they used to be uh, blue painted. I don't know if they still are, but it's been kind of strange because they had these blue painted ones. They had ones that were not painted at all that seemed to be uh, just a bit better quality, had a little bit better of a cutting edge. And then they had these ones that were painted black. So I'm not exactly sure what's going on with Irwin, but uh, their products are just changing all the time. And I do not have any of like the nice Milwaukee's. I do have some DeWalt's here. Here's one of the DeWalt's. And they're actually pretty decent. They aren't hollow ground. They don't have that center core. But they still are a pretty nice uh, auger bit with a pretty good cutting edge. And they are pretty heavy duty. Now many of these augers uh, can cut through nails. It will damage them. But all you have to do is take a grinder and grind the little surface there becomes more of an issue when the side, 
here we go. This little side cutting edge gets damaged uh, just because it's difficult to sharpen without getting into this little pocket with the grinder and actually drawing back on the bit. And oftentimes these larger, older augers are in pretty, they end up getting rusty, but they are in decent condition. And they're so expensive new for the larger ones, it's always nice to find one of the old ones. And once, one more time, these things are just so great because when you get down deep into a bore, all these flutes help keep the drill bit really nice and straight. But they do have a bit of friction. You do need to have a pretty decent drill. This is an old Greenly. This actually has two cutting edges. It has one, you know, pre-cutting uh, wing there, but it actually has two sweeps, which I thought was kind of interesting. And I've used this before, but this is one of a more of an old school style. I'm not exactly sure what era these were in, whether these were, say, 1930s or 1950s. I'll quit blabbing in a second. Things that seem like augers but are odd, and I wanted to bring this out. This is actually a counterboring tool so if you're working with large or larger cross-section wood or soft materials this is designed to drill a hole through so that you can put in a bolt but it has this extra thing which kind of looks like an auger and it more or less is as a sleeve this is a counterbore so you drill through the hole and then this will make a larger hole behind it but you don't drill in all the way you may drill in just a little bit say that far that way you can install a bolt and then make a little wooden plug to cover up the head of the bolt, and it makes it uh, a much nicer looking uh, attachment. You have a nice heavy duty bolt, but then you get to hide it. So that's what a counter bar is. Uh, this odd one here, this is actually a carbide tipped high performance uh, auger bit, and it has a much different, has a very, it has a nice thick center core, and actually a really widely spaced, kind of oddly shaped fluting. It's relying entirely on the carbide tips to do the cutting. These are for much higher speed cutting, uh, oftentimes used in any type of production process where you're drilling through wood, furniture manufacturing, for instance. And of course, if you're working with hardwoods, then the carbide will last much longer and provide you better finishes, as well as obviously increasing the speed. But that's what a real high performance auger, and I'll drill some holes with maybe you know four or five of these bits. And Greenlee, uh, in the old days, really was one of the much higher quality uh, auger bit manufacturers. Here's a slightly newer Greenlee. This is a 3 8 auger. But as you can see, it's been ground from 7 16 billet stock. And this, as far as, you know, how beautiful or how finely machined, this does not have the center core design, but it's fine on a little one like this. But as far as any auger bit I've ever found, this has been probably one of the most high quality ones. It actually has two cutting wings. And just really nice, if we can get the camera to focus, really nice manufacturing work right there. Really uh, a beautiful little bit. I don't actually ever use that bit. It's only greenly like this that I've ever found that was uh, entirely ground from billet. At least as far as the finished quality. I believe these are machined uh, versus actually being ground like this one. But I could be wrong. I couldn't find any videos on actually how these particular types of drill bits are modern, are made in modern days, or in any era. Anyway, let's do a little bit of drilling. Alrighty, we got our favorite block here. I'm going to go ahead and choose the old Greenlee with the two cutting surfaces. I'm going to do one of these newer, cheaper Irwins. The current DeWalt, of course, the speed bore, and then this carbide one. I'm going to run them all at a thousand RPM. But this time I'm using my DeWalt DW235G. It's one of the newer ones. I think in 2015 or 16 they upgraded them to 1000 RPM and 8.5 amps. So since I'm using bigger bits, I'm not going to use a uh, 3H drill. The other thing I should note is the standard shank size on all these bits is going to be 7 16 Sometimes, like these Irwins have a 3 8 the speed bores have a quarter inch. But pretty much all the time, they're going to be 7 16 because they're made for heavier duty drills. It's a real long bit, and it's really uh, has a lot of strain on the chuck spindle and bearings, and you need just a bit heavier duty of a tool. All right, I'm just going to knock five holes like I did in my last spade bit video, and then I'll take a quick look at the, or we'll take a quick close look at the finish. Here we are with the speed board at 1,000 RPM.
these speed bores really jam up with uh, wood chippings real or wood chips real fast. The flutes are just at such a steep angle that they don't really crawl and get it to push out. They just start to back up. And I didn't go very deep at all before it really started to bind up. Speed bores are really kind of an oddball bit. They serve their purpose, but I don't reach for them every or at first or as the first bit. Another thing I should mention is it's when you find old ver, uh, used uh, auger bits, ship augers, really take a close look at how straight they are. These bits are just really easy to bend. They're often very deep down into the wood, and you have a long drill attached to them, and it's very easy to uh, torque to one side or the other and actually bend these things. Now we have the current version of the Irwins. As you can tell, these the shorter helix angle acts as an Archimedes screw and screws out the chips. You still have to periodically clean them out. Whoop. But they go much deeper in a single pass. One thing I'll say about the DeWalt augers, and I assume with the Milwaukee's, but they, at least from the factory, they make uh, pay real close attention to making sure they run straight, like this auger here. Really runs extremely true. So this is the DeWalt auger. Actually, that works pretty nice. Yeah, that felt a lot better than that Irwin. It really did cut more nicely. I'm going to go ahead and do the Greenlee right here. Because I'm running out of space on this side. And I will do the high performance bit last. Let me get this cord situated more appropriately. And I've used this Greenlee before. But this is under optimum conditions. It's not... Or at least all the power it needs. Man, that actually, that cut beautifully. And those really small flutes, it doesn't really want to jam up. Not a ton of friction. And a lot of space to excavate chips. Okay, I don't think I mentioned the brand, but this is a B&A auger. It's a 15 16 in this situation. This is the high-performance carbide tip. It actually sells the glue. I haven't ever actually used this bit. It is American-made. And uh, one thing I was going to say is this is the 18-inch version. And even, this is a really nice bit. Here we come up. It's kind of hard to see here. But that's actually running extremely true for a drill bit that's overall length is, uh, you know, half a yard or half a meter. Really pretty surprising. So let's see how it does. Same RPM. This thing should probably be running uh, quite a bit faster. Should leave a nice cut because uh, really hard cutting edges and soft materials actually do leave nice cuts. Oh, we got all jammed up there. It was the darn plastic dip to protect the carbide edges. And use my experience with that on other bits is it just gets blasted right off the first time you use it. In this case, it was really bonded on there and then all the wood chips stuck to it. We're going to try that one more time here. Properly cleaned. That is fast. Even with the uh, same speed. Alright, here's our close-up. And we learned a few things. When an auger does get totally clogged up with chips it'll stop moving forward and right at that point you should stop drilling otherwise it's just going to burn up the bit reverse it you know like an inch and then you know pull it out and try to clear out those chips and if they have any protective plastic covering you should remove it beforehand because it uh, doesn't always want to remove so we've got the bits there's the speed bore we can see that this hole is actually not too bad speed bores are funky they get clogged up they have a short set of flutes they're not going to drill a super straight hole but they are you know an efficient I guess short auger and they do leave a decent finish I'll have to admit that 
here is the actual Irwin auger. It does have a pre-cut wing on it. I did want to point that out even though this grind isn't quite the best. And it actually also left a pretty decent hole. So this is a DeWalt. They actually, since this has the extra corner, this is like a bit of reinforcing. I did a little bit of research to give it the strength to actually cut through nails, which is the big deal about these DeWalts. And I think part of the expense, even though the grind and everything doesn't seem, you know, it is better than the Irwin's, but not particularly special, is that they're using a higher grade of steel which can add significantly to the expense, even though everything else just seems the same. I know that the DeWalt's have gotten some good reviews about taking nails, but this square cutting edge we can see right here is pretty blunt and doesn't leave anywhere near as nice a finish. You can just see how it tore the wood just going in there. Once you get into the bore, it's okay, but if we do a quick zoom in here, you can see that there's quite a bit of tearing in the hole versus either of these other two holes. The Vintage Greenlee, I think, did an excellent job. It really left a pretty nice hole, really drilled nicely, cleared out the chips, excellent. Really goes to show who's to say that actually newer is better. Although I have read these Greenleys, as nice as they are, this small cross-section on the bit that these do often end up getting bent a little easier. Here's our high-performance carbide tip uh, bit. And we can see it really tore up the hole, but it was just plowing through it. And we can see that it just has an incredibly coarse feed screw in there. It really is meant to just drive through the material super quick. And I suspect that part of this rougher finish is just because a 1,000 RPM may have been way too slow for a 15 16 bit. This may have been much more optimal at, say, 2,000 RPM. Of course, that deals with Douglas fir here when you're different woods you need to you know make sure that you have your speeds correct especially when you're getting in the hardwoods it's really easy to burn up bits going too fast in the hardwoods anyway sorry for the long video but there wasn't a ton of videos about ship augers and just using them and demonstrating them and a lot of tool demos they use ship augers to show how powerful the cordless drill is by running a big old bit through a piece of wood but not a lot of them really kind of just make an informational video about ship augers uh why they're so great because they can drill and single passes very deep you know you can run an 18 inch auger through a piece of douglas fir in one or two strokes like a 10 inch stroke clear out the chips and then go back in again and the fact that because they have the long shaft on them once they start drilling the hole the whole shank of the bit keeps the keeps the it aligned so as long as you start the hole straight it'll be straight all the way through and you can pass bolts or anything else and things will work as expected you start using speed bores to make deep holes through big pieces of wood like this and the hole is going to be wandering or it's going to be stepped and then you're going to have a hard time trying to pass something straight through it anyway i really appreciate everybody watching and subscribing and if you haven't subscribed please do until next time caddis maximus out